In today's episode, we make one of Bryce's dreams come true. We upgrade our pole barn's dirt floor to insulated concrete. We could not have done this without some neighborly help. Come join us as we start to get our hands dirty. Yay! Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back. This is the current state of the garage. We are getting ready to lay concrete. And so far we've came in and leveled the area and kind of dug out and dug around all of the existing uh, cement that was laid for the shop cabin and are starting to put in all the footings and starting to put in pretty much all the rebar and foam and insulation and poly and just weatherproofing stuff on the floor to make sure that in this really wet, humid environment, that there's no moisture that comes out of the floor and just kind of rots out everything that's in here and makes it nice and humid. <laughs> I've only really had wet and humid garages. So to me, spending an extra two grand on insulation is just a no brainer. You can hear the rain out there, it just started. So it's nice to be working in a garage for all that instead of trying to do this outside. So yeah, here uh, we're trying to make this slope the most that we can because this is uh, almost the perfect height to drive our van in. I think the max air fan is just gonna hit the top a little bit. So we're trying to slope this down and kind of dig it out just enough to make a good door seal to protect from mice and rodents. Do, 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 do. But also, so there's enough slope there to drive the van in without hitting it coming in the door. And then right over here, you can kind of see the poly, which is just five millimeters of plastic laid down on the floor. Once it was leveled, we just have foam on top of that. And this is two inch high density foam. We're gonna be doing the whole floor in that. And then over here, you can see we already got this pretty much set up to pour concrete. Got the rebar in place, got all this taken off and cleaned. There was a bunch of mice and debris that had gotten behind this back layer. So all that's been taken off and addressed. So this is gonna be the first part that we pour. And this just is the empty space that lines up to kind of the shop cabin there to give us a clean edge. The back half of the shop is all gonna be flat except for this part by the door. The front is gonna have a drain right in the middle and it's all gonna slope inward toward that drain. And then we're gonna have that drain go outside and just have a big hole with rock in it. So I'll show you that process once we get to it. With that said, let's get to work. I just gotta lay down some more insulation and cover this entire floor.
It's also worth mentioning, we have two different piles here that were brought out of the garage. We got some rock that was hauled in there for kind of the quote unquote dirt floor and then sand. Uh, in order to level it, we had a lot of leftovers, which is great because my driveway, if you've looked at it at all, is full of potholes. And so it'll be perfect to use some of this rock in order to fill all those holes. Let me know in the comments though, if I should be mixing that with clay or something so that it's not just, I don't know, gonna squish around and cause just as big of a hole as soon as I drive over it a few times. I'd love to know. This foam that's all beat to heck and dirty. This is all stuff that came out of the ground. So it was pretty much where uh, this stuff here on the right is anyway. And it kind of went all the way around and it's like a frost barrier to protect that building when this freezes and that's being insulated and heated during the winter. I'm trying to reuse as much of it as I can because it is exactly the same foam that I bought and it's all gonna get buried in the concrete. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter if it looks beat up, it still has the same R value and insulating properties. So that's where you see me over in the corner here, just kind of scavenging and using these because I'd much rather do that than just cut an entire sheet. I'd rather either return one of the sheets that I don't use or try to use it for some other project. There we go. <laughs> It's all laid down. I think pretty painless process. Some of these uh, angles over here got a little bit weird because I was trying to save on foam, but that's kind of it. So let's move on to the next step.
It's about nine o'clock. We started at about 6.30 and by 8.30, everything was done. I cannot believe how fast this process goes. You can tell that uh, Jeff, the guy helping me out and doing it is a true master just because it went so smooth. He made it look so easy. And I know from experience, anytime something goes that way, that's as complicated as pouring cement, it just is a very high level of skill, you know, really cool to see, really cool to witness uh, and need to be part of. There's a lot to it. Even the cement truck driver, the guy had been in the industry for so long and he was just making my life super easy with the boom arm. He'd move it right out of the way with the wheelbarrows for all of this, this whole center section. And so I was doing the wheelbarrow and Jeff was going and smoothing out the cement, making sure it's the right level. And so it was just really neat where I'd come in and scoop a load and he move it out of the way and go back and forth. It's hard to quantify just the skill involved, but someone controlling a 20 foot boom arm so surgically without tipping over the uh, wheelbarrow and doing all sorts of stuff, getting in your way, hitting you. I mean, just made it very, very simple. And we got a really good rhythm going and busted it out in a really short amount of time. I mean, all in all, it was about an hour and a half of wheelbarrowing. Good morning. It is day two of the concrete pour. I just pissed off Kane somehow. He must think that I'm an intruder. <laughs> what a way to start the day. It's about six in the morning. It is 39 degrees out and we are just getting set up for the final pour of this section of concrete. We're gonna pour the back half today. There should be a lot less wheelbarrowing going on. So we're gonna try to sneak the uh, cement truck behind the, the building, it's a pretty tight fit. It's about nine and a half feet because there's one giant tree that's kind of leaning inward. So if we can get around that pine without taking the mirrors off the truck, I think we'll be doing really good today. how tidy these corners are unbelievable everything is all sealed up we're just waiting for it to harden i think i can actually walk on it right now but i'm gonna just stay off it for a while uh one thing that i did figure out is this door is out of square and so even though there's more than enough room uh, where the cement goes right up to the door seal. When you open the door, it actually gouges the cement. So I'm gonna have to raise that door probably an inch and then reseal the bottom. Um, no big deal though. I mean, we're gonna have to modify a lot of this stuff. I plan on putting foam insulation into each one of these panels, maybe even putting uh, fiberglass or another type of insulation over it and then putting OBS, I think in the future, but that's probably at least a year out. For now, I'm gonna focus on just trying to rodent proof everything. Um, you've seen all the damage that they've done in the other cabin. You've seen some of, the, some of the rodent holes I've showed you around different parts of the garage. And so I really just wanna focus on getting it completely rodent proof. And I feel like it's gonna be the easiest at this part. You know, if I go and I seal up the walls and I miss some holes in the walls that they're obviously coming through, there's kind of no going back at that point. I'd have to start taking walls apart, insulation out and all that. Um, so I'm gonna do my best from this stage and probably keep it like this at least for a year and it's a lot of money too to insulate at the end of the day it'll be another probably two to five grand depending on the level of insulation and if we do the roof or not that's a big question mark um i still want to put a, a lift in here 
like a car hoist and they're 12 feet tall. It's <laughs> much taller than my ceiling. These beams are only 10 feet so that the car hoist would actually have to be two feet above those beams. So kind of more centered in the garage, I would have to bump it out. So I don't know what that's gonna look like or even if I'm gonna be able to do it, but uh, that's all kind of going through my head right now. Is the van going to fit? Tomorrow's pour day. Got it all laid out, all the rebar, foam, everything's leveled. This is the drain. You'll see some snapshots here of all the work that went into digging that thing at a downward slope to go outside here through this wall. And then the bobcat just 
did a bunch of work digging a giant hole there. I tossed all the extra scrap rock and bricks and broke it all up the smallest I could um, to, to make like a, I think it's called a French drain in there. So it just, any of the water that comes out, this is this pipe is all at just a, a really nice light uh, slope gradient downward. Um, and it's like a four inch pipe comes out right into this big rocky hole and then we we've put big rocks and then some small rocks and then we then we put like a piece of that garden cloth <laughs> i don't know the actual name of it down over that just so that the sand doesn't go all the way through and plug everything up and then reburied it and so there you go the drain is done took maybe half a day i am super pumped on this guys After a few long days, here we are. The shop is totally finished. My dream is realized. I didn't think we were gonna get this done this year, but it just worked out too perfect with my neighbor, Jeff, killing it, doing an amazing job, coming and helping me on his nights and weekends so that we could get this done like in early spring so I can use it and enjoy it and try to mouse proof this building all throughout the summer. It just worked out all too perfectly. So thank you again for the help. Anyone that's watched our channel, if it's up to me and Jen, it seems like our progress is pretty slow. So you can just tell when you have professionals that come and assist and do 99.9% .9 of the work, you can get way more done. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you for coming along with this journey. I hope you enjoyed watching the entire concrete pouring process, prep, all that sort of stuff. I hope I did a good job explaining it all. But if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed it, please like, follow, subscribe, all the normal stuff that people ask for. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.